Hi, I'm Chet Marchwinski, Communications Director at the Lean Enterprise Institute, and today I'm talking with uh, Ernie Richardson. He's an LEI faculty member. He learned lean management at Toyota Motor Manufacturing. He's a co-owner uh, of Teaching Lean, Inc., which helps employees and executives develop lean capabilities and behaviors, and he's an advisor to Kinross and a unique application of applying lean principles at a, a gold mine. I'll also be talking to a couple of people from Kinross to get uh, their insights on the transformation. Ernie and uh, Vincente uh, Ramirez, thanks for joining us today to talk about the lean transformation. I saw this description uh, on Ken Ross's, about Ken Ross's lean journey. Uh, it, it said, the price of gold will determine the mine life unless changes can be made to the way we do business. I thought that was a bold statement because in a commodity business, I always thought the price rules and there's nothing you can do about it. So um, I don't know, Ernie, what do you think? So uh, I think at Ken Ross, you know, what they were talking about, uh, the commodity is not a controllable for the company. So therefore, the only thing they can control is actually looking at how much uh, their cost is. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the ability to control cost and be able to put cost in perspective and continuous improvement, uh, they're able to absorb more fluctuation in gold price. Therefore, if gold prices go down, they have a bigger gap to be able to continue to make money. And so, uh, what a motivator, right? Yeah, totally yeah. awesome. You can kind of they can get away from that uh, tyranny of the uh, the commodity. Yeah, price. and and not and not reacting all the time, ha and being proactive instead of reacting. So that's exactly what we teach in Lean and in, in the development of people and how to be able to control your output versus let other people control it for you. Yeah. Now I'm sure they're not on a Lean journey uh, for the heck of it. So what was the business problem that Ken Russ is trying to solve? Yeah, yeah, it goes back to initially, you know, uh, a typical uh, business model to say, you know what, we've got to make improvements, but not a structure of being able to do it. And so, uh, so the, they were very good at recognizing we need to take the, uh, a, a really a better approach, develop a structure, create the continuous improvement teams, mm -hmm. therefore then being able to implement things that are going to make a difference for their company in the long term. And really, their, their overall success and failure depended upon it. And so uh, their business model says, you know what, we have to make change. We can force change, which is not really good, and it's not been successful for other companies, or we can motivate people to help us make change in the long run and change the culture. And the culture change is what's been uh, so powerful and contagious. Yeah. yeah. Um, Vincente uh, Ramirez, thanks a lot for uh, uh, coming in today and sharing your insights from uh, Kinross. Mm -hmm. I'd like to ask, uh, where did Kinross begin the transformation? So back in 2009, Kinross um, began a continuous improvement department. But where our, our transformation really started, I think, is, is when we joined forces with Ernie and his group. And what they did is we took a couple of the classes with them, the Lean Concepts, and uh, we started to understand that we had to develop our people and we had to also communicate to our people how important this is for us to continue to look for these process improvements, these cost savings, because as Ernie mentioned a minute ago, we don't control the price of gold, but what we do control is how much it costs us to make go the ounce. Okay. Has the transformation spread? Yes, actually it has. We've, we started out and we started with a small group of high potential people and then we celebrated those successes and we shared it with the rest of the group. And what we've seen is it's starting to spread like wildfire. People want to get involved. People want to get on board with this stuff. So it's really just taken off. Wow, that's terrific. That's good news. Now I'd like to bring in uh, Deanna Hall from uh, Kinross. Hi, Deanna. Thanks for coming in and uh, sharing your insights from the uh, Ken Ross. I wanted to ask, uh, have you found an effective method for capturing improvement ideas from people? Yes, we have actually. So Caterpillar was gracious enough to share their continuous improvement boards with us. And they're virtually the suggestion box with the walls knocked down. So we do have a way to capture the ideas from the, from the workforce now. How are people, how are people uh, responding to that? Well, uh, we've had our are shaky moments, but right now I think we really do have a great process. And last year alone, out of 900 employees, we had 500 ideas submitted. Wow, that's excellent, excellent. Thank you very much. Ernie, final question, uh, if people want to learn what, uh, can they uh, do that? Well, you know, it, it, we, we do all kinds of workshops that, that focus on different perspectives of what a customer needs. So uh, we always start with understanding, as John Shook says, what is the problem you're trying to solve? And then we have workshops related to uh, key concepts of lean, which is what we're working with Ken Ross on, 
We also do eight-step business, uh, eight-step problem solving. We also gimbal walk. So there's a wide range between us and LEI that we can uh, support companies when they're starting their lean journey. Okay. Ernie, thanks for coming in. Deanna and Vincente, thanks for coming in. And thanks for viewing. If you want to learn more about the, these workshops, go to lean.org and click on education. And while you're there, explore the website and help yourself to all the resources, most of them free.